Good morning, afternoon and evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am Brenna Victoria and welcome to episode 8 of the American Mafia Family Series, appropriately named the Buffalo Crime Family. Now, before we continue, I would greatly appreciate it if you could like this video, subscribe to my channel, if you haven't already, follow my Instagram at BrennaVictoria2020, follow me on Twitter at BrennaVictoria0 and lastly, don't forget to share this video with your friends. Now the Buffalo crime family has gone by many names over the years, and these names are still in use today. The family is known as the Magadino crime family, the New York crime family, the Todaro crime family and the Arm. The family is Italian-American and they're based in Buffalo, New York, here in the United States. They operate or have operated throughout western New York, Erie, Pennsylvania and Hamilton, Ontario. The Buffalo family has very strong connections with the Hamilton-based Lupino and Paapalia families. The current boss of the Buffalo family is, Joseph A. Todaro Jr., also known as Big Joe. He is the son of Joseph E. Todaro Sr. Akalid Pipe Joe. Joe Sr. retired. In the early 1900s, Angelo Palmieri was the first boss in Buffalo. But by 1912, he had stepped down and assumed the role of the underboss while the title of boss went Joseph D. Carlo. In 1921, Stefano Magadino, who had just immigrated from Costa La Mare del Golfo, Sicily, in 1902 to New York City, but since there was really no border then, he was had actually fled from Sicily to Buffalo, New York, for killing Camillo Caso, a man who had killed Magadino's brother, Pietro. Boss Di Carlo died in 1922, and Magadino succeeded him in becoming boss. The family actually gained power during the Prohibition era through bootlegging, which all the other crime families did as well. In 1931, Boss Magadino became an original member of the Commission. Now the Commission acted as basically governing body of the American Mafia. Magadino's strongest ally was none other than his very own cousin, Joseph Bonanno, boss and member of the Bonanno crime family. The two bosses were from the same Sicilian town of Costa La Mare del Golfo. In 1931, the commission decided that Stefano Magadino and his Buffalo family would control Ontario, Canada, and that Joseph Bonanno and his Bonanno family would control Quebec, Canada. The Buffalo family stayed and remained strong relatively united until someone had the audacity to challenge his leadership in the 1960s. This caused a split in the family, they became fractions and they attempted assassinations on Magadino. By early 1968, Magadino's empire began to crumble, when police found $500,000 stashed in Magadino's funeral home and in his own son's attic. This piece of news made much of the family and associates begin to withdraw from Magadino. He repeatedly told everyone that money was tight and that none of them would be receiving Christmas bonuses. Many of them stopped trusting him. The internal war fired up even more, once Magadino died on July 19, 1974, but quickly died in the 1980s, when Joseph Todaro Sr. became the boss. When Todaro Sr. took over the Buffalo family, many of the members had been operating within the Laborers International, Union of North America Local, 210 for years, while also hiding from the police to avoiding the scrutiny they faced, and continued to operate illegal activities. In 1989, both Todaro Sr. and Jr. were identified in a FBI gambling investigation as traitors of the 45-made Buffalo Mafia family. The investigation claimed that both Sr. and Jr. Todaros were in control of so many, various criminal activities which included labor racketeering, bookmaking, loan sharking and narcotics trafficking. It was then claimed that Todaro Jr. was running the Mafia family on behalf of his semi-retired, Joseph Todaro Sr., who just so happened to be splitting his time between his Tonawanda and Florida homes. The FBI stated that local 210 member Leonard F. Falzoni controlled a loan sharking operation for the Todaros and brothers Victor and Daniel Sansonese who were also members of the local 210 controlled bookmaking operation, which was also owned by the Todaros. While this investigation was going on, it was pressed that the FBI had planted a recording device in Falzoni's union owned car in 1988, but that proved to be unreliable as there was nothing they could use as evidence to link the Todoros to any illegal gambling. But some other notes on this investigation was taken, and it was found that from listening to the recording device, Falzoni's 1987, Buick was responsible for the dismantling of the Torina drug ring. The Torina drug ring was bringing more than $2 million weekly, just from street sales that was also from cocaine alone. 
Special Agent G. Robert Langford was quoted as saying conversations overheard in the car of Leonard Falzoni indicated that this operation was being directed by the mob hierarchy in Buffalo, although there was not enough evidence to charge Falzoni or Todaro in the ongoing investigation at the time. But still, the FBI went on to arrest mob associates Joseph Pepe Conizzaro, Albino Shah Shah Principi, and Salvatore Sam Naples Napoli. The investigation continued after these arrests, though. The continued investigation into into Todaro's, as well as into the Torina drug ring, revealed that Todaro and Falzoni were actively involved in a Las Vegas to Buffalo pipeline for cocaine and other felonious illegal activities. On March 20, 1990, Las Vegas police ended up arresting Louis Jambruni, Joseph Amoya and Lawrence Ponero, all Buffalo natives and all associates of the Buffalo family. The one key man they needed was Charles Torina, a Buffalo native who was key to the pipeline and who had previously worked as a pit boss in a Las Vegas casino. While this was going, Canadian police arrested 114 suspects in a drug ring that had connections to organized crime. Ha! What else is new, am I, right? Anyways, the suspects were linked to Buffalo and Niagara Falls. Under anonymous conditions, a spokesperson for law enforcement said any drug activity or any organized crime activity in St. Catharines, Hamilton and Niagara Falls must be approved by the Buffalo family. The families in these areas only answer to the Buffalo family. John Anticoli, Carmen Barry Laro, Nicodemus Brutsese and Dominic Vaccaro, all associates, were of the 14 suspects arrested and were said to be made members of a Hamilton-based mafia family that reported all activities to the main Buffalo crime family. Now, in 1996, Joseph Todaro Sr. and his son Joseph Todaro Sr. were listed among 24 alleged organized crime figures who were accused of influencing the Laborers International Union of North America since the 1960s. The Laborers Local 210 forced Joseph A. Todaro Jr., Franco Bifilco, Salvatore Cardinale, John Catanzaro, Leonard Falzone, Sam Fran Gamare, Bart Marzara, Robert Panero, Donald Panpentino, John A. Perry, Joseph R. Perry, Charles Pastieri, Joseph Rosetto, Danny Sanzizi Jr., Victor Sanzizi, Louis Securella, and Vincent, a.k.a. Jimmy Securella, out of the union. In 1996, and late 1996, excuse me, the Buffalo family, along with the Los Angeles crime family, joined forces to take over a loan sharking and auto insurance fraud racketeering in Las Vegas, controlled by Herbert Blitzenstein, a Chicago outfit associate. The L.A. underboss Car Carmen Milano, along with the L.A. soldiers Steven Sino and Louis Caruso, and L.A. associates Johnny Branco and Peter Caruso, originally planned to rob and steal Herbert Blitzenstein's jewelry. After robbing Blitzenstein, the L.A. mobsters planned to have Buffalo family soldier Robert, a.k.a. Bobby Panero, fence the stolen jewelry. Carmen Milano decided that Buffalo family boss Joseph Todaro Sr. would receive a piece of Blitzenstein's Las Vegas rackets. The job of robbing Blitzenstein was given to Peter Caruso, but Caruso changed the plan and decided to murder Blitzenstein and take over his Las Vegas operations. On January 6, 1997, L.A. associates Antonio Dabby and Richard Friedman shot and killed Blitzenstein in his own home. In 1997, the Buffalo family's Canadian faction boss Johnny Papilia and his lieutenant Carmen Valerio were murdered by Kenneth Murdoch. When the police arrested Kenneth Murdoch in 1999, he decided to become a government witness. Murdoch told authorities that he was ordered by brothers Pasquale, a.k.a. Pat Musitano and Angelo Musitano of the Musitano crew to murder both Johnny Papilia and Carmen Ballolero. According to Murdoch, the Misitano brothers had been fed up with being a satellite, aka a crew, of the Buffalo family and having to pay tribute money to the family. Murdoch also claimed that he was waiting for Pat Musitano to approve the murders of four Lupino crew members, N Nadal, 
Lupino, Vincenzo Lupino, who were the two sons of Giacomo Lupino and Dominic Violi and Giuseppe Violi, who were the sons of Paolo Violi. Also revealed by Mur Murdoch was that Pat Musitano had discussed with Cubic Mafia boss Vito Rizzuto and Gitano Pampinto about Rizzuto investing in Ontario. The Canadian Intelligence Agency had observed meetings in October of the 22nd and 23rd of 1997 between Pat Musitano and Vito Rizzuto, which become more significant after the deaths of Johnny and Carmen. Eventually, these agencies were convinced that the Musitano brothers did not act alone in the murders of Johnny, Carmen, and Eno Mora. In 1997, these factors led Lee Coppola, veteran organized crime reporter for the Buffalo News, to write an article titled The Rithered Arm. In it, he stated, Today's Buffalo Mob disorganized and all but penniless as a far cry from its heyday, and that the last visible remnants of mob power in Buffalo disappeared. However, Coppola's pro-announcement was premature. In 1999, article reported that Canadian intelligence indicated a new crime lord linked to the powerful Todaro crime family had been installed over the Golden Shoe region of Ontario. According to CISC intelligence, the new yet unidentified Buffalo boss had a strong relationship with outlaw bikers, unlike his predecessor, predecessor Johnny Papilia, who refused to work with them. As, as a result of this new yet shaky alliance, organized crime expert Detective Sergeant Peter Pol Polsetti of the CISC said the Tadaro family now controls Niagara, Hamilton, Toronto, and Montreal. In 1999, Joseph E. Tadaro Sr., along with his son Joseph Jr. and 16 others, were named in a civil racketeering lawsuit for controlling local 210 through the years by various racketeering acts. The court complaint identified Tadaro Sr. and Jr. as underbosses of the Buffalo family and the owners of La Nova Pizzeria. Tadaro Sr. never belonged to 210, but his son Jr. served as local 210 business manager in 1990 before resigning. The charges were based on the testimony of Robert, excuse me, Ronald M. Vino, a former business manager of local 210 before he became an FBI informant. Over the course of the later part of the 20th century and the first part of the early 21st century, the Buffalo crime family declined in influence. Factors included older members slowly turning away from the organization, younger Italian Americans showing no interest in its operation, an 11-year federal operation that forced the family out of local 210 between 95 and 2006. Introduction of the New York lottery deprived the family of a major revenue source, illegal gambling revenue, and the rise of Tadaro Jr.'s legitimate pizzeria business. Tadaro Sr. allegedly retired in 2006, leaving many in law, in law enforcement to believe Leonard Falzon had taken his place. However, others thought Falzon was only acting as the front boss for the Tadaros and that Tadaro Jr. was the acting boss while his father became the senior statesman for the family. The FBI continued to release the crime family's organizational charts until at least 2006. The Niagara Falls reporter indicated Leonard Falzon was promoted to the top spot from Joe Tadaro Sr. reportedly stepping down in 2006. After the deaths of Tadaro Sr. in 2012 and Benjamin Sonny Nicoletti in 2013, rumors swirled about who would lead the family. In 2012, Matt Greretta, uh, who was a crime reporter for the Buffalo News, said that many believe the family had expanded into the new millennium through telemarketing, marketing pump and dump stock scams and internet pornography with the family expanding its operations nationwide. 
That same year, Dan Herbeck wrote an article about Ronald Fino called Life After Local 210 for the FBI's Inside Guy. The article indicated Fino was skeptical of the Justice Department's claims that mob influences were totally removed from the Local 210s and the Laborers International. Ronald believed that federal trusteeships the government established to clean the union didn't go far enough. Additionally, the Toronto Star's organized crime reporter Peter Edwards indicated that in 2013, the Buffalo crime family was seeking to revive itself from recent losses through loan sharking at the Casino Niagara in Canada on the American border. In the late 2000s, news broke out about a homeowner association scam alleged to have ties to the mob. The wit a witness told the FBI that the Silver Lining Construction Company was controlled by the New York mob and that its owner, Leon Benzer, th thought of himself as a soprano because of his association with attorney v John V. Splotero, the nephew of Vegas monster Tony Platero, Splotero. Investigators also disclosed a key player in one of the HOA's takeovers was Paul Satelli, who was known to have ties to the Buffalo mob. According to George Knapp, I team reporter for CBS News affiliate KLAS News Now Channel 8 in Vegas, the FBI said Satelli is affiliated with the mob boss. Joseph Bravo, another defendant in this HOA scam, was indicted with Paul Satelli for being part of, of a Las Vegas to Niagara Falls cocaine trafficking the King Ring run by the Buffalo Mob from the late 1980s to the mid-1990s when it was considered the dominant La Cosa Nostra family on the streets of the Las Vegas. Nearly 20 years later in March tw uh, 2017, after Coppola's article The Withered Arm, Dan Herbeck wrote a similar piece titled The Mafia is All But Dead in Western New York. The FBI field office in Buffalo stated that only scattered remnants that were no longer believed to be active or organized remain. The piece also highlighted many of the same factors that Coppola's 1998 article cited for the decline of the Buffalo crime family. However, the Canadian Mounted Police, aka the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, made arrests in the project's Otamarins, indicating that pronounced about the Buffalo crime family's demise was overstated. In 2017 of November, the FBI and Canadian newspapers indicated that the family is still active. In November of 2017, Giuseppe and D'Amico Violi, who have long-standing ties to the Buffalo mob, were arrested on narcotics trafficking charges. These charges show a continuation of the long-established mafia drug trafficking tri triangle from Toronto to Hamilton, Ontario to Buffalo, and Montreal to New York City, established by Stefano Magdino and his cousin Joseph Bonanno. Michael McGarity of the FBI said the Otamarin's operation unearthed and dug up the roots of a partnership extending from New York City to Buffalo and, Tor and from Toronto to Montreal, proving once again the Italian organized crime groups have evolved far beyond the neighborhood cliffs of days gone by. Additionally, Peter Edwards in the Toronto Star wrote, the arrests also hit members of the Buffalo crime family headed by the late Joe Todaro. The U.S. Department of Justice said that the Canadian law enforcement authorities had arrested various members and associates of the Bonanno, Gambino, and Todaro crime families on charges that included narcotics trafficking. In response to these arrests, Canadian journalist Adrian Humphreys wrote, Among those arrested in Canada were members of the Todaro organized crime family based in New York, according to U.S. authorities. The Todaro crime group was built by the now deceased Joseph Todaro Sr., who took over the Buffalo Mafia once, led by the influential boss Stefano, the undertaker Magdino. Further, in September 2018, Peter Edward reported that the Buffalo mob is not dead, despite some media reports saying so. According to his article, the Buffalo Todaro crime family is strong enough to call the shots in the recent mob war between them. Mastiano and other crime families in the Hamilton underworld. 
This article also states New York State Mob still has considerable ties in the Southern Ontario underworld. I don't think anyone knows for certain how this plays out. One thing's for sure, Buffalo will always have a say north of the border. Said by Paul Manning, a former Hamilton undercover police officer who worked on organized crime investigations. Buffalo would have to give approval for high-level killing sources added that mob leaders there also believed to have turned their backs on one side in the dispute, giving tacit approval to others. They're all supposed to be under Buffalo, one source said of the two feuding Ontario crime factions. Buffalo factions of traditional organized crime are not in Canada per se, but historically have controlled aspects of Canadian family business and do get kickbacks from profits from illicit activity, Manning said. Reporters allege that Al Labaroni of Ancaster was killed in September 2018 in retaliation for the 2017 murder of Angelo Musitano. Rumors circulated that the murder was related to an unpaid debt and rivalries between Niagara monsters and influence from the mob in Buffalo. Revenge was another reason for Angelo's death. James Dubrowo indicates that this hit wasn't just approved by the Buffalo crime family, but it was ordered by D'Amico Violi himself. It was it was then revealed that Violi was the Buffalo Mafia's underboss. Angelo's murder occurred 20 years to the month after Musitano hitman Kenneth Murdoch killed Johnny Pops Papilia, the longtime Buffalo mob captain and head of the Papilia crime family. Murdoch also murdered his right-hand man, Carmen Bur Burliello, a Buffalo and Papilia crime family soldier. Additionally, the Toronto Sun claims that the current mob war in southern Ontario has its roots in the mob conflict that had Palio Violi and his brothers Francisco and Rocco murdered in Montreal during the late 1970s by the Rizzito family. Now, Fran Francisco and Rocco are D'Amico D'Amico and Giuseppe Joe Violi's dad and uncles. So, just in case anybody's wondering. Before we continue with the rest of the story, if you are enjoying this video and wish to hear about more scary or creepy stories and abandoned places, please hit like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell icon for notifications. Now, let's return to the story. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Here is part two of episode seven of the Buffalo Family. When Todaro Sr. took over the Buffalo family, many of the members had been operating within the Laborers International, Union of North America Local, 210 for years, while also hiding from the police to avoiding the scrutiny they faced, and continued to operate illegal activities. In 1989, both Todaro Sr. and Jr. were identified in a FBI gambling investigation as traitors of the 45-made Buffalo Mafia family. The investigation claimed that both Sr. and Jr. Todoros were in control of so many, various criminal activities which included labor racketeering, bookmaking, loan sharking and narcotics trafficking. It was then claimed that Todaro Jr. was running the Mafia family on behalf of his semi-retired, Joseph Todaro Sr., who just so happened to be splitting his time between his Tonawanda and Florida homes. The FBI stated that local 210 member Leonard F. Falzoni controlled a loan sharking operation for the Todoros and brothers Victor and Daniel Sansonese who were also members of the local 210 controlled bookmaking operation, which was also owned by the Todoros. While this investigation was going on, it was pressed that the FBI had planted a recording device in Falzoni's union owned car in 1988, but that proved to be unreliable as there was nothing they could use as evidence to link the Todoros to any illegal gambling. But some other notes on this investigation was taken, and it was found that from listening to the recording device, Falzoni's 1987, Buick was responsible for the dismantling of the Torina drug ring. The Torina drug ring was bringing more than $2 million weekly, just from street sales that was also from cocaine alone. 
Special Agent G. Robert Langford was quoted as saying conversations overheard in the car of Leonard Falzoni indicated that this operation was being directed by the mob hierarchy in Buffalo, although there was not enough evidence to charge Falzoni or Todaro in the ongoing investigation at the time. But still, the FBI went on to arrest mob associates Joseph Pepe Conizaro, Albino Shah Shah Principi, and Salvatore Sam Naples Napoli. The investigation continued after these arrests, though. The continued investigation into into Todaro's, as well as into the Torina drug ring, revealed that Todaro and Falzoni were actively involved in a Las Vegas to Buffalo pipeline for cocaine and other felonious illegal activities. On March 20, 1990, Las Vegas police ended up arresting Louis Jombroni, Joseph Amoya and Lawrence Ponero, all Buffalo natives and all associates of the Buffalo family. The one key man they needed was Charles Torina, a Buffalo native who was key to the pipeline and who had previously worked as a pit boss in a Las Vegas casino. While this was going, Canadian police arrested 114 suspects in a drug ring that had connections to organized crime. Ha. What else is new, am I right? Anyways, the suspects were linked to Buffalo and Niagara Falls. Under anonymous conditions, a spokesperson for law enforcement said any drug activity or any organized crime activity in St. Catharines, Hamilton and Niagara Falls must be approved by the Buffalo family. The families in these areas only answer to the Buffalo family. John Anticoli, Carmen Barry Laro, Nicodemus Brutsese and Dominic Picaro, all associates, were of the 14 suspects arrested and were said to be made members of a Hamilton-based mafia family that reported all activities to the main Buffalo crime family.